This scene from X Men Origins Wolverine got a pretty bad rap when it came out. With the upcoming yeah, release of the new like Deadpool and Wolverine film, there's a number of very cool close ups of Wolverine's claws in the trailers. And this got me thinking how difficult mm. is it actually to make some photorealistic Wolverine claws? So, here's my attempt. I'm, I made some uh, Wolverine claws. If I had Plastic to guess, claws. I would imagine the problem Literally with that cool. Wolverine film was that the proper Soul data wasn't captured on set to rebuild the reflections. So during the filming of my scene, I made a conscious effort to take down some notes and measurements that would help with this later in the process. First okay. of all, to get the shot, I just set up my camera on the floor. I'm mimicking the same camera angle as that shot from the trailer where it's looking up at his hand. Once I was happy with the shot, it was time for a costume change because I've never seen Wolverine wearing running shorts. Now looking a bit more dressed for the part, I put lots of tracking... It'd be cool if they use real claws. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, they could use like proper, like like physical ones. That'd be cool. Uh, so they look real, um, and then swap the gloves over. So have the CGI come out, but then put a glove on. You know, in the next cut, that'd be cool on my hand to assist with the object tracking later on. Once everything's ready to go, I just did a few takes of the hand movement just to give myself some options when editing so I could pick the best one. Then with the main plate filmed, I captured the all important data. I shot a couple of extra plates, which include a color chart for matching the color of the CG later, as well as a plate of me just holding a normal kitchen knife in the same spot. I did this to give myself a good reference of what this kind of metallic material looks mm. like in this lighting setup Smart. in front of the camera from this specific angle. I also measured the distance from the camera to my hand so I could get the scale of the CG scene should have been shinier. And lastly, I took a high dynamic uh, range image of my scene so I could catch the lighting so data in the room and use this to rebuild to use. the reflections and the lighting later in Blender. Then with the filming done, it's time to jump into shiny, the digital world and make some magic. Shiny I started out by making a mood board with a couple of screenshots from the trailers. Yeah. These came in really handy while modeling to get the shape of the claws correct. It looks like quite a simple model, but it's quite deceiving. Getting the contours and the sharp edges exactly right took a little bit of work. I modeled it in a low poly version first and then applied a subdivision surface modifier and added some loot cuts to maintain the sharpness of the edges. And this is the result. For texturing, yeah, there's hundreds of metallic PBR textures online. I ended up going for a very clean looking brushed metal texture. After adding some quick seams to my model, I was able to unwrap You're it and then apply smooth. the texture to the UVs. I changed the scale slightly in the mapping node until the size of the texture looked correct on the model, and then added a color ramp onto the roughness, and then tweaked the black and white points until I got the correct amount of shininess that I was looking for. Shininess. Then in UK, I start preparing the HGRI and exporting any background plates to Blender. I start by using an ST map and use that to undistort the footage. Once undistorted, I reformat it down to half res and export this as a background plate that I use on my camera in Blender. Then I, I have no idea what you're saying right now. Like, no clue whatsoever. He's telling you how he does it. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for that comment. That That, that is why I need you with me right now because it's wonderful pieces of advice and guidance like that that just make everything so much easier and i also exported a full res exr sequence of the undistorted plate i, I want this to be the maximum quality because this will be what i'm doing the object tracking on in blender i then added object track punch in my camera parameters like my focal length and sensor size and then start tracking all the markers on my fingers and hands i didn't move around a great deal so it's not a particularly complicated object track once mm -hmm. I had enough points, I set up a camera in my scene, set the focal length to be correct, and I the rotation to match the position of my real camera. Then if I enable the motion tracking overlays, I can see where my points are in 3D space. I then created a cube and made it the exact size of the distance between two of the tracking markers on my knuckles, and then scaled my camera and 3D scene around that point so that the scale of the CG hand and claws what? would be real world accurate. Then I added a second cube and subdivided it slightly and sculpted a rough piece yep. of geometry for the hand. I made a better version of this later in the process. This was just right. a temporary version while setting up the position of the claws. Then I append in the model of the claw that I made oh. in a separate Blender file. And then I hopped back into Nuke to process the HDRI. I first use a spherical transform node, which takes the HDRI. So he's doing all this just to make claws come out? That's like... That's crazy amounts of work. Just get some real claws and do a cut scene where the claws come in. Or, uh, I don't know, you, you need to see them come out. Yeah, I know it's cool seeing the claws come out, but if it takes this much work, God, I, have, I would not have the patience to do the amount of work this guy's doing just for this. 
sky out of equirectangular mode and maps it in a slightly more usable way. Then I can tilt the view down until I'm looking at the color chart on the floor. And then I use a third party node called MM Color Target, which allows you to overlay a digital version of the color chart dots. Would you guys mind if I skip ahead and just then you to see do an inverse color grade on your like plate to take it from the current bit closer to the end, to see the actual result version. rather than all this the stuff is incredibly handy through. when working with different cameras because neutralizing your plates means that all the cameras have exactly no, no. the same color. Right, okay. This is pretty essential when it comes to creating photorealistic scenes. Right, let's go. Let's just jump to animation. Then obviously the claws need some animation. So I did a few keyframes animating them to go back up into my arm and just refining the position on every frame so they're always coming out the same part of the knuckles. Then at the end of the shot, they go back in. So I'm doing this process in reverse and animating them to go back up. Then I set the hand to a holdout so it would occlude the claws when they're passing through and did a first render just to put this together and you can see how it looks. This is what the render looks like with no comp work, just putting it straight on top of my footage. Oh, okay. Rather so than no making comp a holdout just... for the entire arm, it was just easier to make a mask in Nuke and exclude the bits of the claws that I didn't want to see once they'd passed through the hand. Currently, the CG is rendered real. with the neutral okay. grade of the HDRI, but I haven't applied the neutral grade to my plate. Well, maybe we should wait also neutral finished. grading the footage of me, which is a bit detrimental to your footage, and is bad practice to affect the in-camera plate. Instead, the beauty of this color chart process is I can wide. take a node with that color transform baked in and Let's then invert it, finished. which will then take anything with the neutral grade and then apply the exact color data from the plate of me onto the CGI. Sounds a bit complicated, but it's essentially just inverting that process, and as you can see, yes. the claws now look perfectly color matched to the shot of me. At this point, I made a better model of the hand. It's going to be a shadow catcher as well as a holdout, so I wanted the geometry to be fairly accurate. I used some metaballs just to block out the shape of my knuckles and fingers. Then I joined them all into one mesh, remeshed this in sculpt mode, and then used some of the sculpting brushes just to tweak the shape when needed. You've got to I go also to then took to the time to, to make this, a clean frame for the hand projection without the tracking markers on it. I just did this on one frame and just quickly painted out all oh the markers God, using the clone tool and then exported this as an EXR so cool. and then brought that into Blender, used the project from view unwrap on the hand from the camera's perspective and then applied that texture to the new hand model. And as you can see now, the tracking markers no longer appear in the reflected version of my hand. Obviously, we don't want to see them in the final version. I then set the new hand model to be a shadow catcher and did another quick render just to see how this was looking in Nuke. Once I updated the render in Nuke, I can then shuffle out the shadow catcher pass and multiply this over my hand before the CG claws. And this will apply all of the shadow and ambient occlusion data, which really helps to make the claws feel connected oh my to my hand and less floaty like they are in the initial Wolverine film. All right, I'll just pause it there. Cause, I mean, when I, when I watched that for the very first time, I didn't realize the CGI. But when I watched it for the very first time, it was on a really dodgy pirate copy that had been leaked to the internet. So, yeah, it was the it was a copy, it was a copy that had the uh, unfinished CGI editing at the end. So everything was still skeleton. So, you know, maybe I should. Have watched, I don't know if actually I, I don't know if I've actually properly watched this, um, as a the full release. So. Then to make the reflections even more realistic, I took this a step further and projected the texture of my entire body onto a rough 3D model. Currently the scene is set up and lit just using the HDRI, but my body isn't in the HDRI, so currently we're not seeing any of my jeans or my jacket reflected in the claws. Annoyingly, setting the model of the body to indirect only so it didn't show up in the render actually affected the shadow catcher of the hand. So I ended up putting these into separate collections and rendering the shadow completely independently no idea instead of baked into the EXR sequence using the shadow catcher render layer. It achieves pretty much exactly the same result, but I've split them up into completely separate renders so I can turn off any collections that are affecting the shadow catchers independently. This is what the previous render looked like without the model of the body reflected in the claws, and this is what it looks like now. At this point the CG is more or less done, so I start to finesse the compositing. Here I'm adding a very slight amount of defocus just to match the sharpness of the CG render to the sharpness of my hand. Then because the depth of field in this shot is quite shallow, I'm also doing a 3D defocus. What I'm doing right now is they doing an edge right. extend on the depth pass that I rendered from well, Blender wait so that there's no strange values finish. on the edge of the depth pass that will cause some defocusing artifacts. Once I've applied this treatment to the depth pass, I can then shuffle this back in and set my desired focal distance oh within the bokeh God. node and then just turn up the defocus to taste until there's some nice defocus falling off at the end of the claws when they get closer to camera. I'm also doing some last minute black and white what? point adjustments. The color chart process gets it pretty much all the way there. I just made a couple of tweaks just to make the highlights on the claws ping slightly more, so I made them a little bit brighter. I also added a very subtle glow just to mimic some bloom coming off of the hottest highlights. 
Then I finally plucked up the courage to remove all of these tracking markers. With the beauty of editing, they disappear just like that, but the reality is I spent about 20 minutes tracking the different sections and then transforming the pixels nearby over the top and then grading them as necessary to remove the markers. For an additional level of detail, I wanted to add a couple of frames where the holes that the claws had made were closing up in the hand. The claws so I jumped onto textures.com and found a texture of some meat. Yeah. I'm vegetarian, so this image was actually slightly nauseating to look at. I cut out a small section, color graded it slightly to get the desired effect and then used a fractal blur on the edges just to roughen them up slightly with some noise, and then transformed and animated this into place. Oh. So as the claws disappear, there's just about two frames where there's some lingering cuts on the knuckles that are disappearing. Now at this point, I actually thought I was done. Whenever I think a shot is finished, I just watch it on loop for a few minutes, and I was staring at it just thinking something's not quite right, and then I realized, mm. here in the original shot, you can see my hand, and then the shadow of my hand on my leg, and then in the final comp, you can see the claws, and no claw shadow on my leg. So I just placed a massive I cylinder pick in the scene that. to go where my leg was. Doesn't need to be super precise, it's just something to catch the shadow. The HDRI wasn't quite producing sharp enough shadows for this, so I actually went in and added an additional area light into my scene. I set the size to be quite small so that the claw shadows would match the sharpness to the actual plate. Set the cylinder to a shadow catcher and rendered this out as a third separate render pass. Then I drop this into Nuke, and the final thing to do is just make sure it's isolated to that part of my leg. The model oh for the shadow catcher in 3D Jesus wasn't very Christ. precise, it was just the curved face of the cylinder. I did a two-point track on my leg, and then used this to track any mask that, onto my leg. His I was going to completely roto it, and then I realised that my front leg way was past actually a lot brighter than my back this. leg, and I thought, work smarter, not harder. So I did a luminance key on my leg, and was yeah, able yeah, to pull about 90% of the outline of the leg just from the luma key. Then I did a quick mask just to get any bits that the key didn't pick up, and then used that entire alpha that I had just created as a mask for so where yeah, the shadow catcher would let's, go. Let's There's a bit of overlap to... at the top where the claw shadow is then going on top of the original shadow let's... for the VFX work. Then for the final cherry on top, I jumped let's into Resolve and gave it a nice colour grade to really bring it to life. And with all of that work done... Are you again, ready this for this, guys? I've got all like. that technical explanation. Pause. Uh, that looks real, that looks real to about here, that looks okay to about there, but this section here, like the bottom quarter of the blades, just don't look right, they, they, they just don't look, I, I just don't think they look real. This part here, oh, this looks real. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do that again. I hope you think it looks cool. I think it holds up really well, even against the claws in the Deadpool trailer, which is some great VFX work. If you're interested, the project files yeah. from this video are available on my Patreon. You can download all of the footage that I used in oh, this video, go. the 3D Pulled model of the claws, the HDRI, the blender scene with the animations. They it's are all cool. On there I mean, with. leave a comment below for what effect I should try next. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Obviously, we've gone through the whole process. He's told us every single thing technically about it. It's cool, but um, yeah, they're, they're all right. Uh, I don't think they're any better than the current Wolverine Deadpool, but I, I think it would have been better if they just put real props, prop claws on in the uh, in the film and stuff like that. So they did, but not for the claws coming out. Okay. Uh, right, okay. F oh my god, I'm fluffing it up. Fair enough. Um, no, it was a good video. Uh, yeah. I'm glad I watched it. I haven't got a clue what the guy said for 90% of it, but yeah, good video, man.